Good morning and welcome to Church at Home with Rachel for Monday the 28th of November. My name is Rachel Parker and my pronouns are she and her and I am an Anglican priest in the Diocese of Edmonton in the province of Alberta and I am the rector or the priest for Dayspring Ministries which is St. Mary's Edgerton, St. Saviour's in Vermilion and St. Thomas and Wainwright Three, um, a village in two small towns in the southeastern corner of the province of Alberta in Canada. Welcome to my day. Welcome to our day. One of the one of the things I do every day, in, at least Monday to Friday, is I get up and I say what's called my daily office or my prayers. And I often use different resources or devotions to help me sort of enter into a time of prayer. One of them is a book called Our Daily Bread. It just has little short devotions that someone has written. They they ping off of scripture and, and then they um, present just something to think about, pray about for the day. And I'd like to share with you one from back in October, October 11th. It says here, the scripture is from Genesis 12, verses 1 and 4. So go to the land I will show you. So Abram went. And I'm like going to read this to you. It says, your part, God's part. And this is written by Leslie Cole. When my friend Janice was asked to manage her department at work after just a few years, she felt overwhelmed. Praying over it, she felt God that was prompting her to accept the appointment. But still, she feared she couldn't cope with the responsibility. How can I lead with so little experience, she asked God. Why put me here when I'm going to be a failure? Later, Janice was reading about God's call of Abram in Genesis 12 and noted that his part was to go to the land God will show you. So Abram went. This was a radical move because nobody uprooted themselves like this in the ancient world. But God was asking him to trust him by leaving everything he knew behind and he would do the rest. Identity, you'll be a great nation. Provision, I'll bless you. Reputation, a great name. Purpose, you'll be a blessing to all peoples on earth. He made some big mistakes along the way, but by faith, Abraham obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. This realization took a big burden off Janice's heart. I don't have to worry about succeeding at my job, she told me later. I just have to focus on trusting God to handle, to enable me to do the work. As God provides the faith we need, may we trust him with all our lives. And the prayer says, Dear God, I want to surrender to you my fears and worries about succeeding in my roles and responsibilities. Please help me to do my part as you do yours. Amen. I don't know about you, but that really resounds with me. This fear of not being able to do that, which I believe I'm called to do next. And that could be, you know, with me, it's taking on the role of the third church for Dayspring, but also becoming the Archdeacon for Rural Ministries for a diocese and not having a clue. I really don't know what I'm doing. Um, I wake up every day and say a prayer and say, okay, God, help me. <laughs> sometimes God speaks louder than others. And sometimes I just sort of fluff my way through. Um, most days, I don't think I mess up too badly. <laughs> Some days I do okay. But it doesn't have to be about a new job. It could be about, you know, becoming a teenage parent. I remember when my oldest stepson turned 13, his mom had kept saying, you know, things like, when you're older, when you're older. And for whatever reason, this young man got it in his head that when you're older meant when he turned 13. So the night before his birthday, he went to, he went to bed, said goodnight. He was a normal 12 year old. When he woke up in the morning, he came downstairs and started ordering me and his brother and his dad around like total personality transplant because he thought that he was grown up. He was older now. And so he got to call the shots. He was a big guy and it was absolutely unbelievable. And my husband and I both looked at each other and thought, what just happened? We are now parents of a teenager. Oh, heavens. <laughs> <laughs> and we definitely had to say to God, okay, <laughs> how do we, how do we deal with this new role in our lives? And now it didn't take very long before my, my eldest stepson realized that that really wasn't going to be a, a very healthy way <laughs> of approaching teenagehood um, in the household. Um, and things sort of leveled out eventually, but it really brought us both short in realizing that even, you know, just going to bed one night and waking up the next, your whole world can change. We became parents of a teenager overnight. 
and all that that brought with it. And that can be overwhelming. It could be going to work and finding out that your job has changed. Maybe, you know, the person that you work with has gone on maternity leave and now you're taking over their responsibilities as well. Or maybe even something greater, you found out that your job has ended and now you're called to search for something new. Or maybe you're starting a brand new thing. You've, you've sort of screwed your courage to the sticking place, as Lady Macbeth would say, and you've, you've ventured out to try a new thing. Maybe you've decided to become an entrepreneur. You're an artist or a photographer, and you're going to take that chance to, 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 to try to put your, put your, your artwork out there and, and see if you can make a living or even, you know, facilitate your hobby financially. It can be a big thing when we take that step out on faith, knowing that we're called to do something different. We're called to do something um, out of our bailiwick. But if we are doing so on God's command, we don't do so alone. We go forward knowing that God has prepared the path ahead of us. That does not mean the path is going to be easy. And by no means, by no means. But it does mean that we do not wander that path alone. As a matter of fact, it means we pretty much don't wander it at all, but we follow the path, following in God's lead, heading to where we're called to go. I know there have been so many times in my life when I could I look at that passage about Abraham or, you know, Moses when he was standing and speaking to the burning bush and God said, I call you and Moses is like, I can't speak, I stutter. That's why I'm going to send Aaron. Well, how come Aaron can't do the whole job? Nope, I need you. You're the one I need, Moses. You're the one I need. Now, remember, Moses had been taken and hidden by his mother and his sister in a, in a basket and placed in the reeds and was raised as a member of the royal household in Pharaoh's household. God had plans for Moses long before Moses could even sit up and say hello. And those plans sometimes went awry, like when Moses interfered with a fight that was happening among the Israelites and he killed someone and he ran away. But God was still able to find him and use him to do something incredible as he used Moses to get his, to get the Israelites out of Egypt, to lead them toward the promised land. All things that Moses had no idea he would be called to do, nor did he have any self-belief that he could do it, but he was willing to trust in God. Didn't always trust the first time out, but eventually he did trust in God. And that's the thing. That's what, that's the, that's the thing about living the lives we live is when we're called to do a new thing, it can be daunting. It can be terrifying, but we don't do it alone. We do it with God's help. We do it with the people who are around us. The boss who says, here's your new re responsibility means we have a boss that we can turn to and say, hey, I'm kind of confused about this. How do I do this? Or can I get a little bit of help, a little bit of guidance, some encouragement? Or maybe, like I said, you're branching out into your own entrepreneurial idea or you're, you're taking your hobby to the next level. Maybe you've got friends or family who can support you and encourage you. But at the end of the day, you have to believe in yourself. You have to believe that you have the tools you need to do what you're being called to do. So whatever it is you're being called to do today, trust that you will be able to do it. And I have a hunch that if I could get through figuring out how to be the parent to two teenage stepsons, you can do anything that God calls you to. So as you go forward, Go into that land that God is showing you and trust that God will not abandon you, that you won't be left alone, that you'll have everything you need to be able to do what you're called to do. And you'll learn along the way and you'll provide great gifts to other people and you will grow and you will be able to celebrate those things that you didn't know you could do before, but now you can. Open yourself up to the possibilities and then be amazed by what you can do. Have a great day and God bless. I'll see you tomorrow for Church at Home with Rachel.